Okay, we've got our data source, which is our Power BI data set, and we've got our table of data, our data set, which is the eBay country data showing the country, city, and then the total sales for each. I want to visualize this in a report. How do I go and do that? Well, if I was in Power BI Desktop, on the right-hand side here, I'd have a number of different visuals, I could drag and drop, and then I could go and enter the data here. It's not quite as straightforward as that in Report Builder. However, I do think that there's a fear factor here that somehow this is incredibly difficult to do even simple reports. That's just not the case. And let's walk through exactly how I could go and just add a simple table of data for a report. So, now that I have my data set, I want to insert an item. I could right click and choose insert, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the top and show you the different items you can show here. So, I have a table and matrix control, a list control I'm going to hold off on right now. We're going to focus specifically on adding a table and matrix. And then I've got different visualizations like chart cages, etc. that I could also go into. There are some other items here we're going to cover in later series. You may have heard Patrick or uh, Adam talk about rectangles in the past. If you've listened to some of their videos on paginated reports or SSRS, that's an incredibly powerful item that uh, could either provide a lot of benefit to you or end up screwing your report unnecessarily. Uh, so we'll hold off on that for now as well. But all I want to do right now is just show a simple table of data uh, of this information. So to do that, I'm going to start with a table and I'm going to use a wizard. So I'm going to toss, go through a simple wizard and say, okay, here's my data set. It's just eBay country data. Next. And I want to show it by a country and I want that to be a group of rows. Now let's see what this looks like if I choose a city as my column groups and then sales. I want to show the sum of the sales as the actual values. And you see there's a number of different things you could potentially show here. You could show the maximum, you could show the average sales. Uh, any of those items could be done. And in fact, you can do multiple items here if you wanted. So I'm not going to take, I'm going to move that out, hit next. And then I have an option to say, okay, do I want to show it as with subtotals and grand totals? And if I do, I want to expand and collapse the groups. That'll be on automatically. I'll say, sure, I just want to see what this looks like, and then preview the report item being created. You can customize all that other stuff when you're done. Now, at this point, how do I see what this data looks like? Because it's like, boy, this doesn't make any sense. This is a really small uh, table that I'm creating here. But when I looked at the query before, I had a number of items that were running on down the page. Well, the way you can preview the information in the context of Power BI Report Builder is you hit the Run button. So you don't have this idea of a live preview, but it's very straightforward to go and check what the information potentially looks like because you just hit the Run button here. So now it goes. It's connecting back to the table, uh, to the underlying data source in the service. And then you see, oh my gosh, you know, this runs really far off the page. I have to scroll all the way over, and yes, the data is there, but this isn't really what I was looking to do in the context of my report. So I don't like how this looks. I want to go back and redesign it. So I'm going to click on the design button, and I'm going to do something here that I know that SSRS pros would probably uh, flinch at. I'm just deleting it. I'm going to start over and just redo the wizard because, again, I'm, I'm a brand new user in the context of this video. So I'm going to re-choose the country data next. I'm going to do country and city and then sales. So I'm going to do those as row groups and not have any column groups. Hit next. I'm going to leave the subtotals and grand totals here. And so do I want to show that as above or below or the subtotal below? Hit next. And again, I'm quote unquote, pretending that I don't have any idea what each of these items will do. But to go and try this, I could, okay, so I've got a group here, and you'll see, we'll talk about these in a later series, uh, what exactly this means. And I see row groups down here. Again, don't know what any of this means. I just know that if I have my country, it groups it by the cities. So I'll have the United States, Germany, uh, as different country groups, for example, and then the sum of sales for each. So if I go and hit run again, So now I see, okay, Belgium has a total sales of that, but I don't see any cities. I have to expand to see the city name. For Germany, same thing. And for the United States, same thing. So you see here that, again, this is at least cleaner in the context of 
Okay, I can scroll up and down. I can expand, collapse it. This is this feels like a much more natural table to me uh, in the context of what my report was, as opposed to scrolling all the way off the page and being really ugly to read. But again, it's a very, very basic table. I haven't done anything to format the numbers. You see here, this has got several data, decimal points. And so I need to clean this up as well as part of this process. But that's how you go and insert a very simple table uh, to get started. And again, that was super simple. I've created my connection to my data source, and maybe this is all I need. I doubt it, but again, very easy to get started with just a simple table.